Chapter 23 Where to Start Every page in the book is a place to start, something that can be discussed, planned, and tried. Every conversation you start is a possibility for change. Did we take a step toward customer centricity today? Even one step is a great step. Are we seeking, welcoming, and acting on the customer feedback that is negative? Some comments and suggestions can be hard to hear, but we will be stronger and grow more when we take these seriously and follow through on five-star solutions. Customer centricity isn't about empathy, delight, and maps claiming to diagram what users feel. Customers will be delighted if we understand their tasks and needs and build what improves and solves those. Delight is the side effect, not the goal. Try it. Have you ever never needed support? Customer centricity is about creating PSE so intuitive and such a great match to users that they don't need support reps. Can you think of a product or service where you never needed support? You were able to do everything yourself. Nothing was broken or frustrating. I don't mean you tried to get support, but couldn't reach them or get your problem appropriately resolved. I mean, you never needed help. There is poor quality everywhere we look, which means there are always opportunities for improvement, evolution, and revolution. It's never good enough for customers. Target audiences don't care what businesses want or need. They don't care about your goals or initiatives, but that can't be a two-way street. Businesses must care about what target audiences want or need. Without this, you might not have customers. You're leaving money on the table when you treat customers like pawns to push around. You can't give them minimum viable crumbs and assume they will join, stay, be satisfied, or be loyal. Go beyond care and claiming we have empathy for customers. Do we have the necessary information and evidence to make better decisions? If so, we have no excuses for not making better and more customer-centric decisions. If not, we must start focusing on our customers and the high-quality PSE we will need to create to win and keep them. Are we taking customer-centric or customer-peripheric actions? Are we knowingly releasing a guess or broken PSE? Go beyond building something because an executive or stakeholder requested it. We don't have to be order takers. We can ask a stakeholder why they want the feature, but where is the customer in this conversation? We want to make stakeholders happy, but the consequences of unhappy customers are far worse than a grumpy stakeholder that didn't get their way. Be customer-centric and value-led ensuring that we always deliver high customer value. If you don't want to be a feature factory, stop working from features first and an exec had an idea first. Where are our problem statements? Are we guessing what customers need? Did we research them well or just survey them to see what we could sell them? Resistance to change. It can be hard to create change when our company got this far doing what it has been doing. Why should we be different or better when we can say this is working for us? We're making money, our stock price is going up, and our HR survey says that 74% of staff are at least somewhat happy here. We must push past complacency and it's good enough. Our PSE aren't good enough. Our work environment isn't good enough. Talk about the projects everybody sweeps under the rug, the disasters and embarrassments. Discuss outcomes and root causes of failed projects that delivered poor customer experiences. Showcase these as examples of wasted time, money, morale, customer trust, customer support, 
marketing budget, sales efforts, and more. Highlight these as what happens when we aren't customer-centric. Once you have successes from more customer-centric projects, showcase these for contrast and as positive case studies. Try it. Hindsight. Think about previous disaster projects at your company. Where in the process were mistakes or poor decisions? Were we wrong about what we thought customers would like? Did we make multiple mistakes along our project's journey? Now that we see that disaster more clearly, talk about it more openly, learn from it, figure out how something like that can never happen again. Be who we claim to be. If we claim to be agile in any form, then we believe in continuously improving our ways of working. We believe in self-assessment and learning how we need to improve our processes and our PSE. We change what needs to be changed once we understand our own problems. We don't avoid that understanding. We dive in knowing it'll hurt a bit before it improves. If we claim to be innovative, then we can correctly diagnose our own problems and invent solutions. We should never say, we can't do that, or, but this is how it's always been done. The innovative mindset says, let's figure out how we can do that, even if solutions come in phases and evolve over time. We have company values, but we don't live by them. We put them on posters, shirts, and presentation slides. We don't deal with toxic or abusive staff or leaders who behave opposite to our values. Take your culture problems seriously. When results come in from internal surveys, don't just hope that our scores look better next quarter. Investigate and act. Create policies around accountability so that problem-causing staff are motivated to be better. Empower individuals and teams to be problem finders and problem solvers, not just order takers. These are experts and specialists that you hand-selected from hundreds of applicants. Trust them. Treat them like you trust them. Support critical thinking and tough questions. Challenge the status quo. Experiment with new ideas and ways of doing things. Learn from our failures, but preferably move more of those failures out of the public eye. Catch more of our failures during user-centered design processes to reduce the risk and waste of releasing guesses. Customer centricity reminds us that the best practices for PSE design and creation aren't hard rules that, if followed, automatically produce PSE market fit and customer satisfaction. The best practice is research. Research first, research often, and find solid data and evidence that inform careful decisions, continuously pursue customer intelligence, and use it in all areas, strategies, goals, initiatives, PSE, and decisions. Most companies we admire invest heavily in generative research to understand target audiences' behaviors, needs, tasks, and perspectives. We can do that too as soon as we stop telling ourselves that research isn't worth our time or budget. Customers can tell when our PSE is broken or a poor solution. They might not know which team is responsible or how to best describe it, but they know when we didn't give QA enough or any time or resources to find all of the bugs. They know when we didn't give CX enough or any time or resources to understand customers' needs and design the best solution. They know when we rushed it out, half tried, and thought it was good enough. Customers know you suck, but the solution isn't to try to trick them into thinking that we're good enough. Customer centricity is about 
putting customers of all types at the center of our business strategies, goals, initiatives, PSE, and decisions so that we don't suck.